people are willing to inflict pain on another human being, even when a robot orders them to do so. People are willing to harm and cause pain to another person, even when a robot orders them to do it. Scientists from SWPS University have shown, repeating the famous Milgram experiment. Instead of a human, they used a robot as the authority giving orders and achieved very high levels of obedience. 90% participants followed all instructions given to them. The university informed. Milgram's experiment involved placing a group of people as teachers and instructing them to deliver an electric shock to their student whenever he made a mistake in the learning process. In reality, the student was not electrocuted, but the teacher's obedience to authority was checked. Repeating this type of research is currently allowed as part of studies on authoritarianism, only if the maximum dose of the applied electrical stimulus does not exceed 150 volts, only 10 buttons. And the organizer takes appropriate care of the psychological condition of the subjects, teachers, after this experience. In the latest experiment, a robot gave the commands. Professor. Thomas Gribb and Professor Darius Delinsky from the Faculty of Psychology in Wrocław, SWPS University, together with Dr. Konrad Major from the Faculty of Psychology, SWPS University in Warsaw, also gathered a control group in which a human was the authority to compare the results. During the recruitment of subjects, people who might know the principles of the Milgram experiment were eliminated. Therefore, the respondents did not know that the entire procedure was a staging and the alleged student was a fake person. Ultimately, the results of 40 people were included in the study, 20 in the experimental group with the robot and 20 in the control group with the professor. In both groups, both the human and robot variants, scientists recorded very high levels of obedience. 90% participants followed all instructions, i.e. pressed 10 consecutive buttons on the electric pulse generator. Participants withdrew late in the study, in the human control variant on button 7 and 9, and in the experimental variant twice on button 8. Two people in both groups withdrew from participating in the experiment. The results were published in the journal Computers in Human Behavior, Artificial Humans. Transferring various supervisory and decision-making functions to a robot arouses strong emotions because it involves various ethical and moral risks. The question arises whether the above-mentioned obedience shown by the subjects in accordance with the Milgram paradigm would still occur if a robot, instead of a human, i.e. A university professor ordered the participants to administer electric shocks to another person. The aim of our study was to answer this question, explains one of the authors of the repeated experiment, Dr. Conrad Major, who directly supervised the entire experiment. The authors of the publication emphasized that the role of robots in the modern world is becoming more and more important. One of their functions may be to give orders. For example, they can direct traffic, prevent people from entering a hazardous area where an unexploded ordnance has been found, and in medicine, persuade people to follow a specific treatment method. Also in education, they can encourage learning by acting as a teacher or trainer. Previous experiments by other researchers have already shown that people follow robot commands even when they make no sense. To our knowledge, this is the first study to show that humans are willing to harm another human being when a robot tells them to do so. Moreover, our experiment also showed that if the robot escalates demands, instructing a human to inflict more and more pain on another human, people are willing to do the same, the researcher emphasizes. In the described study, the robot was not autonomous. It strictly followed the behavioral pattern adopted by the authors of the experiment. However, the authors take into account that in the near future robots will have a certain degree of autonomy in making decisions. 
They observe that the speed at which robots gather information is already faster than that of humans, and this difference will continue to widen. This may therefore lead people to trust robots more than humans, which in turn may have serious consequences. Undoubtedly, as psychologists emphasize in their publication, robots in the future may be an important help, for example in evacuation from buildings at risk of fire or earthquake. However, research on the role of a robot in the evacuation of a building in which a fire broke out has shown that sometimes we trust robots too much, even in such important moments. Even when the robot indicated an escape route to a dark room with no visible exit, most people were determined to follow this hint. In response to the question of how this can be prevented, Dr. Major shows two ways. First, robots can be programmed to warn humans that sometimes they can make mistakes and make bad decisions. Secondly, we need to focus on education from an early age. Because although robots can usually be trusted, they cannot be trusted unconditionally. Humans reached America much earlier than previously thought. New analyzes of fossil footprints. New analyzes confirm that fossilized footprints discovered in New Mexico several years ago are probably the oldest direct evidence of human presence in the Americas. Scientists have determined that the traces were created around 23,000 years ago. Years ago. When and how humans first settled in the Americas has been a topic of debate in the scientific community for years. Until recently, it was believed that humans reached North America during the last ice age around 14,000 years ago. Years ago, however, in recent years, numerous artifacts have been found that seem to contradict this. In 2021, the results of analyzes of fossil traces discovered in New Mexico were published in the journal Science, which suggested that the footprints are about 23,000 years old. Years, i.e., they were created approximately at the peak of the last glacial period. The authors wrote in the publication that the prints were left by a group of our ancestors walking on the mud near an ancient lake, which no longer exists and where White Sands National Park is located. The authors also argued that since people were in the Americas at the height of the last ice age, either the ice was not a major obstacle or people had been there before. This study was met with much criticism due to the methods of dating the traces. The immediate reaction in some quarters of the archaeological community was that the accuracy of our dating was insufficient to support the extraordinary claim that humans were present in North America during the last glacial maximum. But our methodology has really paid off in this current study, said Jeff Pigarty, a geologist with the United States Geological Survey USGS, and co-author of a newly published study also published in Science, that confirms the age of the tracks from White Sands National Park. The controversy concerned the accuracy of the age of the tracks, which was determined by radiocarbon dating. Seeds of the common aquatic plant Ruppia serosa were found in and around the fossilized prints. It was based on the age of these seeds that conclusions were drawn about the age of the traces. However, Aquatic plants may obtain carbon from dissolved carbon atoms in the water rather than from the surrounding air, which could potentially confound the study and suggest that the material is older than it actually is. Radiocarbon dating is based on how a specific isotope of carbon, CARBON14, decays radioactively in organisms. Aquatic plants can capture carbon from water, and carbon in groundwater that has been isolated from the atmosphere for some time may have already broken down. Hence, there were suspicions that the plant had absorbed old carbon, which distorted the results. To settle the debate, researchers conducted further dating. 
In the new analyses, scientists focused on radiocarbon dating of coniferous pollen. It comes from terrestrial plants, which avoids potential problems that arise when dating aquatic plants. Radiocarbon dating is a robust and well understood method. Any type of organic matter can be dated this way, as long as there is enough of it. When trying to date pollen, the problem is its size. Coniferous pollen grains are very small, usually about 0.005 mm in diameter, so a lot of them were needed. The researchers used a method called flow cytometry, which is more often used to count and sample individual human cells than to count and isolate fossil pollen for radiocarbon dating. Pollen grains were found in all the sediment layers between the footprints at White Sands. Scientists have isolated about 75,000 pollen grains. Importantly, pollen samples were collected from exactly the same layers as the Rupia serosa seeds, so a direct comparison could be made. The dating results showed that the age of the pollen was identical to the age of the seeds. In their work, scientists also used the optically stimulated luminescence OSL, dating technique. This method is more often used for dating minerals. It allows you to determine the age of an object based on when the material was last exposed to sunlight. In this case, it's the minerals in the sand surrounding the footprints. Dating using this method also confirmed the results obtained using other techniques. A giant solar storm 14,000 years ago years. Scientists have found traces of it in tree rings. By analyzing ancient, partially fossilized tree trunks, or rather their rings. Scientists found traces of a powerful geomagnetic storm from 14,300 years ago. This event was much stronger than the largest geomagnetic storm on record in 1859. Scientists emphasize that if such a strong storm were to occur today, it would have catastrophic consequences, potentially destroying telecommunications and satellite systems, causing massive power outages and multi-billion dollar losses. The largest geomagnetic storm in modern history occurred in 1859. On September 1st, English astronomer Richard Christopher Carrington observed a strong flare on the surface of the sun. The ensuing massive coronal mass ejection took only 18 hours to reach Earth. Although such events typically reach Earth's orbit much later, meaning the cloud of plasma hurtling toward our planet was at enormous speed. The cloud caused a geomagnetic storm that brought down telegraph networks across Europe and North America. Reports from that time also say that the northern lights were seen even in Italy. This storm is now called a Carrington event. Nothing like this has happened since then, but recently discovered evidence suggests that our sun is capable of much more powerful mass ejections. In the rings of ancient, partially fossilized trees found in the French Alps, scientists have found evidence of a solar storm at least an order of magnitude stronger than the Carrington event. Their analyzes offer new insights into the sun's extreme behavior and the risks it poses to Earth. The results and description of the research were published in the journal, Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society A, Mathematical Physical and Engineering Sciences. Our planet is constantly bombarded by cosmic particles. Sometimes, however, this stream of particles is particularly strong. It has to do with solar storms. For 70 years, scientists have been studying this phenomenon using direct observations of the sun. This research has deepened our understanding of how solar storms can pose threats to the electrical grid. Various communication systems, satellites and air traffic. However, we still know too little about these events to effectively protect ourselves against them. These storms are the result of powerful explosions on the surface of the Sun. They involve the emission of huge amounts of energy and matter into space. 
Some of the charged particles thrown into space reach the Earth, bombarding the magnetic field and causing its sudden changes. Depending on their strength, these storms can damage telecommunications satellites, disrupt radio transmissions, and even cause damage to energy infrastructure. A team of scientists from the Collège de France, CEREGE, INVE, the University of Aix-Marseille and the University of Leeds examined several hundred thousand-year-old tree trunks exposed near the town of Gap in the southern French Alps. The scientists cut the partially fossilized trunks into very thin pieces and analyzed the rings. Thanks to this, they identified an unprecedented increase in carbon-14 levels that occurred exactly 14,300 years ago. Trees annually record the conditions in their surroundings in their wood structure. This record remains preserved in the wood in the form of rings for thousands of years. By comparing the rise in this radioactive carbon isotope with levels of beryllium in ice cores extracted from Greenland, the research team concluded that the spike was caused by a massive solar storm that introduced huge amounts of energetic particles into the Earth's atmosphere. Carbon-14 is constantly produced in the upper atmosphere as a result of a chain of reactions initiated by cosmic rays. Scientists recently discovered that extreme solar events, including solar flares and coronal mass ejections, can also cause huge spikes in carbon-14 production, said Edouard Bard of the Collège de France and CEREGE, lead author of the paper. The authors of the publication admitted that if this type of powerful event occurred today, it would be catastrophic for a technology-based society, potentially destroying telecommunications, satellite systems and power grids and causing multi-billion dollar losses. They also emphasized that understanding geomagnetic storms is crucial and may allow us to prepare for future events of this type for example by building resilient communication and energy systems. Extreme solar storms can have a huge impact on Earth. Such superstorms can permanently damage transformers in our power grids, causing massive and widespread power outages that can last for months. They could also cause permanent damage to the satellites we all rely on for navigation and telecommunications, rendering them useless. They would also pose a serious risk of increased radiation to astronauts in space, said Tim Heaton of the University of Leeds. So far, nine such extreme solar storms have been identified in the last 15,000 years. Years. The last ones occurred in 993 and 774. But the newly discovered 14,300-year-old storm is the largest ever discovered. Scientists emphasize that we still have a lot to learn about the behavior of the sun and the threats it poses to society on Earth. We don't know what causes such extreme solar storms to occur, how often they may occur, and whether we can somehow predict them. Direct instrumental measurements of solar activity began only in the 17th century with the counting of sunspots. Currently, we also obtain detailed records using ground-based observatories, space probes and satellites. However, all these measurements and records are insufficient to fully understand the Sun. Carbon-14, measured in tree rings, along with beryllium in polar ice cores, provides the best way to understand the Sun's behavior in the distance.